Hello viewers, uh, in this session we will learn about uh, the singularities uh, in particular isolated singularities of an, uh, of an analytic function. So, uh, firstly a point uh, in the complex plane where a function f is analytic is called a regular point. So, uh, a singularity is such a point where f is uh, not defined. So, of particular interest are singular points uh, which are surrounded by points which are regular or in other words if uh, there is a point A such that in the neighborhood of A f is analytic then uh, such a point um, is said to be uh, singularity um, isolated singularity of f and we are interested uh, in uh, predicting the, the behavior of f. Uh, and then um, around this point or using the behavior of f around this point uh, in order to classify uh, such isolated singularities. So, I uh, will first define a regular point and a singular point. Okay. So, uh, a regular point uh, we say that A belongs to C is a regular point of a function f if uh, f is uh, analytic at a. Okay. And a point A is called a singularity of A of f rather a singularity of f if a is a limit point of regular points. Of f. So that's a singularity. So suppose f is analytic. Okay, uh, on B prime A R then uh, we say that f has an isolated singularity at A. Okay, so, the first uh, trivial case is the case where f is actually analytic at a. Okay, so, it is it is analytic in b prime a r recall b prime a r is the is the deleted neighborhood of a. Okay, so, we are removing a from the ball of radius r around a okay. and uh, if f is analytic in this punctured neighborhood or deleted neighborhood uh, it could happen that actually f is analytic at a. Uh, but we did not define it there that is all. So, in that event we say that uh, such a point is a removable singularity of f at a. Okay. Uh, and uh, there are other cases, uh, but uh, first this this is uh, I mean uh, first this is the trivial case which we will uh, consider okay. and then we will classify other kinds of behavior of f around a. So, uh, firstly I will start by giving some examples. Okay. So, uh, consider these functions f 1 of z defined by e power z minus 1 divided by z for z belongs to c okay. and f 2 of z. So, firstly uh, yeah, I will complete these three examples and f 2 of z is 1 by z for z belongs to c one can actually consider f 2 of z equals 1 by z power n n is any integer for z belongs to c. Okay. And f 3 of z is equal to uh, e power 1 by z for z belongs to c. I apologize c minus 0 at 0 this function is not defined. So, c minus 0 and even this is c minus 0. Okay, all these are functions on c minus 0. 
So, all these have singularities at uh, the point 0. Okay. So, f 1, f 2, f 3 have uh, isolated singularities. at um, 0 at z equals 0 okay and um, we could i mean um, f1 could be redefined to be um, so these are three different kinds of isolated singularities as we will see f1 could be redefined as f1 of z so let's redefine f1 as f 1 of z is whatever it is given to be e power z minus 1 by z for z not equal to 0 and let us define it to be uh, 1 for z equals 0. Okay. So, since we know that the limit as z goes to 0 of this quantity e power z minus 1 by z uh, is actually equal to 1. Okay. So, that limit is 1. So, uh, so, if we redefine f 1 to be 1 at 0, okay, then f 1 is actually uh, analytic. One can check f 1 is analytic um, on the whole of the complex plane. So, we have actually uh, in effect removed the singularity at, uh, at 0 by, uh, by redefining f 1 at 0 itself to be 1 which is the limiting value of the definition of f 1 in a neighborhood. So, if the limit we will see that if the limit of f of a function f uh, in a deleted neighborhood as z goes to that uh, isolated singularity exists, then, uh, then f will be analytic. Of course, f is analytic in the deleted neighborhood, okay. then uh, f is analytic uh, in the whole of the disk and that singularity can be removed. Okay. So, such a kind of singularity will be uh, suggestively called as a removable singularity. Okay. So, another way of saying this is uh, the function f if it can be extended to uh, an analytic function even at the point uh, which is a singularity then, uh, then uh, such a kind of singularity is uh, removable uh, such a kind of isolated singularity is removable. Okay. So, we will define that in a moment. So, but f 1 here has such a kind of singularity okay. f 2 f 2 of z uh, has another kind of singularity f 2 of z uh, notice that it tends to infinity as uh, z tends to 0. Okay. Whether you consider this definition or the that definition of f 2 uh, on c minus 0 here also I should have at c minus 0. Okay. So, um, so, whichever definition we consider, uh, we know that as z tends to 0, uh, the modulus of the denominator becomes larger and larger. So, f 2 tends to uh, infinity and so this kind of sing singularity. Okay. So, this kind of singularity has a definite pattern um, uh, f 2 of z uh, in modulus tends to infinity or f 2 of z tends to infinity as we call it. Okay. And uh, also notice that z times f 2 of z if you consider the first definition okay, limit as z goes to uh, 0 of z times f 2 of z is 1 okay. or if you consider the other definition in the parentheses of f 2 then limit as z goes to 0 of z power n times f of z f 2 of z is equal to 1. In either case, the limit of uh, the appropriate power of z minus 0, okay, which is z uh, times f 2 uh, is a non-zero quantity okay, and uh, th that actually characterizes the, the, uh, the kind of singularity of f 2 at 0. So, uh, f 2 is said to have a pole uh, at, uh, the, at the uh, singularity 0. Okay, the singularity is 0 of f 2 is said to be a pole. Okay. And then uh, we will see something, we, we will define something called the order of the pole that integer n here or 1 in this case, we will we'll call that as the order of the pole, we will define that more concretely. 
okay and that's another kind of singularity finally f3 uh, you notice has uh, a different kind of singularity f3 of z uh, does not tend to infinity as z tends to 0 okay and oh sorry as z tends to 0 and f3 of z does not approach a limit okay and f3 of z does not approach a finite limit l okay as z approaches 0 there is no finite limit for f f3 nor does it uh, uniformly go off to infinity so it it's sort of uh, jumping back and forth we will see a more concrete pattern to this jumping uh, uh, and then this kind of singularity is the third kind we will call this an essential singularity okay? and we will see that uh, uh, the casuarity wise truss theorem for these kind of singularities. Okay? And in essence these are the only three kinds of behavior we will also show that these are the only three kinds of behavior uh, exhibited by um, a function which is analytic in a deleted neighborhood of uh, a point A. Okay. So, uh, let us proceed to classify the isolated singularities of a function. So, we will start with the removable singularity like I have said. Okay. So, I will first define a removable singularity f function f is said to be is said to have a removable singularity at a point A, if f is analytic in B prime A r for some r positive and if there is a function there is an analytic function g okay, on the whole of B A R, which means it, it is already defined on uh, uh, at the point A itself okay, uh, with, with g of z is equal to f of z for z belongs to B prime A R. So, g is an analytic function on B A R which agrees with f of z uh, at all points in B prime A R. Okay. So, then f is said to have removable singularity. We will give a criteria to, um, to identify a removable singularity for a function. So, uh, here is the criteria. So, here is the theorem which states the criteria. So, suppose that Uh, f of z is analytic on B prime of A r, okay, where r is some positive quantity. Okay. Uh, there is an analytic function uh, g of z on B A R. So, that g of z is equal to f of z for z, for z belongs to B prime A R if and only if. Limit as z goes to A z minus a times f of z is equal to 0. So, um, if this condition is satisfied uh, that the limit as z goes to a of z minus a f of z is 0, then, uh, then there is an analytic extension of f to the whole uh, open disk B A R if f is already uh, analytic on B prime of A r. Okay. So, uh, and it goes the other way around of course, if uh, g matches with f on B prime of A r and g is analytic, uh, then limit z goes to A 
z minus a times f of z um, will be 0 by continuity of g. Okay. So, um, so, that direction is easy, but the other direction requires some work. Okay. So, in retrospect uh, this is equivalent to saying that uh, there is an analytic extension of f uh, on to the disk B A R if and only if the limit uh, z goes to a f of z uh, is defined if the limit exists. Okay. So, I am saying in retrospect in retrospect of what we are going to do. So, uh, if and uh, if if we prove this theorem, okay, uh, after we prove this theorem, we will see that that will imply that uh, the statement that I have said that limit z goes to a f of z if it exists, then f can be redefined uh, at a in order to make it uh, analytic on the whole disk B A R. Okay, so um, that's that is the uh, theorem. Okay. And in order to prove this theorem, we will first see couple of uh, lemmas. Okay. So, um, lemma before we prove this, we will uh, see these lemmas let f be analytic on b a prime r or b prime a r okay, satisfying limit z goes to a z minus a f of z is equal to 0. Okay. Then integration over gamma f of zeta d zeta is equal to 0 for any simple closed curve. gamma in b prime of a r. So, gamma should lie in the deleted uh, disk b a r b prime a r. Okay. Then uh, integration uh, over gamma of uh, f is 0. So, uh, it is a modification to Cauchy's theorem. So, what we are saying is that we can have a point a uh, at which we have a condition limit z goes to a z minus a f of z is 0. Okay. And uh, with these kind of exceptional points, uh, the Cauchy's theorem uh, still holds that the integration around any simple closed curve of f is 0, okay. uh, if f is analytic in B prime r. Okay. So, the proof is simple. Okay. So, if uh, the inside of gamma Uh, I of gamma recall we have defined what the inside of a contour gamma is okay, uh, does not contain A. Okay. Then uh, the lemma is true automatically by uh, a version of Cauchy's theorem that we proved already. Okay. Because then your inside of gamma uh, is completely contained in the uh, domain of analyticity of f. Okay. So, then uh, this lemma is true. Okay. So, um, if a belongs to inside of gamma, then we we need some modification. If a uh, is inside of gamma, then given epsilon greater than 0, we know there is a delta positive because the limit the, 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 the said limit exists of z minus a f of z okay, and it is equal to 0. Given epsilon greater than 0, there is a delta greater than 0 such that uh, modulus of z minus a times modulus of f of z is strictly less than epsilon by 2 pi. We need this adjustment factor. Uh, okay. So, uh, this is true whenever z belongs to uh, a ball of radius delta around a. Okay. So, then okay. Uh, okay. so now consider now consider a circle of radius. Uh, 
delta 1 okay, uh, with where delta 1 is strictly less than delta, delta 1 is positive strictly less than delta. Okay. Uh, so, I will call this circle C delta 1. Okay. So, consider a circle C delta 1 of radius delta 1 okay, um, around A. So, the center of this circle is A okay. and then uh, integral over gamma f of zeta d zeta okay, is equal to the integration around this circle now c delta 1 of f of zeta d zeta. Okay. This is because now if you have this contour gamma okay, oriented in the positive direction, if we take a circle of radius delta 1 around a, okay, then we know by one version of Cauchy's theorem that the integration over gamma of f of zeta d zeta is going to equal uh, integration uh, or the contour c delta 1 of f of zeta d zeta. Okay. So, these are one and the same by version of Cauchy's theorem. Okay. So, this is by Cauchy's theorem okay, for uh, simple closed curves. Okay. So, then, um, then the modulus of, of this integration f of zeta d zeta is less than or equal to uh, the integration over c delta 1 of the modulus of f of zeta times modulus of d zeta is strictly less than uh, well 1 by 2 pi times uh, integration of epsilon because modulus of f of zeta is less than epsilon by sorry mod modulus of z minus a f of z is less than epsilon by 2 pi. I have modulus of f of z less than epsilon by modulus of z minus a in this case zeta minus a uh, times modulus of d z d zeta. Okay. So, notice this is true for every z in b a delta okay. and this contour c delta 1 lies in completely inside this uh, b a delta. So, for all points on the contour c delta 1, uh, this this inequality holds this inequality this estimate in terms of epsilon holds and so uh, and so we can we can say that the modulus of f of z okay is less than or equal to okay, you can say less than or equal to uh, 1 by 2 pi uh, epsilon by uh, modulus zeta minus a mod d zeta okay and then divide by 2 pi Okay, this is on uh, c delta 1. Okay. So, this is uh, equal to um, epsilon by 2 pi times uh, 2 pi. Okay. So, this integral 1 by mod z minus zeta minus a mod d zeta is 2 pi. So, that cancels and this is equal to epsilon. Okay. So, uh, this is less than epsilon. So, this was a strict inequality sorry. So, so, this is a strict inequality here. Okay. So, I get epsilon, this is strictly less than epsilon. Okay. So, um, so this, uh, so in summary, this integral is equal to this integral and this is arbitrarily small. Uh, so, so integration over gamma f of zeta d zeta is equal to 0. So, notice that we have we have uh, we have proved this by using a technique similar to Cauchy's theorem, but we are using Cauchy's theorem itself once again. What we are doing is we are considering this contour gamma which contains a in its interior and we are sort of contracting this uh, this contour to a very small circle around a. Uh, and then uh, we are estimating the value of the function f on that circle uh, around a itself. 
Okay. So, that is a technique very similar uh, to one in Cauchy's theorem, but this condition this condition that the limit z goes to a z minus a f of z is equal to 0 helps us uh, give this estimate and then we can say that uh, the integral of f around that circle is 0. So, uh, the around uh, the, the integration over gamma itself is uh, of f of z is okay. So, that is the uh, proof of this lemma. There are only two cases that a is in the inside and a is not in the inside of gamma. So, uh, in either case I have showed that the integral is 0. Okay. So, that proves this lemma and uh, we need one more lemma before uh, we can prove the theorem, but first uh, notice that note. So, the here is a remark on this lemma we just proved. Uh, we can have more than one point. Okay, okay. We can have finitely many points okay, A 1 through A n for which limit z goes to A i z minus A i times f of z is equal to 0 and um, and of course, with the assumption that f is analytic on uh, well on a disk B A R minus the points A 1, A 2, so on until A n. Even in this general scenario, we can show that uh, uh, Okay, we can show that using the very same thing we can we can contract these disks a 1 through a n uh, which are finitely many points we can contract this disk to smaller disks or contract this region to a very small disks around these points a 1 through a n okay, and then apply this lemma repeatedly to each of these disks to show that uh, the above holds the same lemma holds with many points. Uh, having such a such a condition limit z goes to a i z minus a i f of z is equal to 0. Okay. So, okay, uh, uh, even in this case even in this case integration over gamma uh, f of zeta d zeta is equal to 0, where gamma is a simple closed curve in B A R minus E 1 A 2 so on until A n. Okay. So, we have to slightly modify the technique uh, of the uh, of the proof of lemma to uh, to consider the case where more than one point uh, A 1 through A n are inside gamma. What you can do is actually then uh, take very small circles around these points, so that the integration over gamma equals the integration over the smaller circles, which do not contain any other points than one of the AIs uh, inside them. Okay, and then uh, by using Cauchy's theorem, the integration on gamma. Okay, so maybe a schematic will help. So here is gamma. Okay, suppose it contains a one and a two you can consider two small circles around a 1 and a 2 and the integration over gamma will equal the integration on these kind of circles. And then we can use Cauchy's or the limit on a the limit condition to show that the integration on these smaller circles um, of f is 0 and hence the integration on gamma is 0. Okay, so, so uh, that is a remark on the theorem okay. and we need one more lemma here. So, let f be analytic what we are going to do is with the same condition limit z goes to a z minus a f of z is equal to 0. We are going to show that the Cauchy's integral formula holds. Uh, okay, so, in b prime a r and let limit z goes to a z minus a f of z is equal to 0. Okay, so, if this condition holds <laughs> let um, gamma be a uh, circle of radius of radius 